The oyster boats leave Bluff at the tail end of the night, an hour to an hour and a half before dawn. On the way out to the dredging grounds in Fobo Strait, the crew can relax below or knock up a makeshift breakfast on the coal range. The boat slowing as it reaches the oyster beds just before dawn is the signal for Ron Bishop to leave the engine room and go up on deck. This is the weather office. Ooh. An anti-cyclone is moving away to the east of New Zealand and an active cold front is approaching the South Island from the South Tasman Sea. This front is expected to advance onto Fiordland and Southland this afternoon and reach the North Island tomorrow morning. as it's light enough to pick up landmarks and to check on one's position and the run of the tide. And by the time people back home are setting off for work, the day's routine is well underway. As the winch plays out, the dredge wires drift back astern. Most times you know a fair area to go to where your previous worked and um, if it's okay you'll stay there till such time as you get down say or 50, 60 sacks and then when you can see it starting to dwindle or you'll just keep on the move till you uh, strike something a bit more better you know and of course we've got about 20 square mile out there to cover but uh, all that is not oysters it's only about perhaps one quarter it could be oysters you can go for a couple of miles in places and never find a one. Big money can be made, but everything depends on the number of sacks landed, and right through the day it's a battle against time and to keep the dredges working. We're blind, we're sitting down, we're not making anything, we've got to be in the bench all the time. Then. You've got to go like blazes to, to try and clear your bench before the next one comes up, because if they pile up on you, well, you'd probably have to stop the dredges in order to catch up again. It takes three to empty the heavy dredges onto the sorting or culching benches. First the stern dredge and then the forehead. There's no letting up. Once the goods are there, everybody pulls in together, everyone's efforts. It's a combined effort on all the crew that uh, there's no shirking. It's all a matter of getting stuck into it and it's non-stop. And I mean, I mean flat out, your, your hands are moving and it's like that all day, you head down and into it. In some cases, if the pickings are really good, I sometimes don't even bother about smoke it when there's a dollar or two to be made looking at you. In the old days, well, when there's plenty of oysters around, you could expect it a hundred sacks a day, and if you didn't get them, you just moved somewhere till you did. <laughs> but that's a, getting a thing of the past now. They're not there like they used to be. Out for a full day, they've been at five. Oh, that's good. Yes, good, thank you. Uh, an oyster opener has to be what we call a natural. You can pick within a fortnight whether a man is going to make a good oyster opener or not. 
after our first full season, an opener has his hands right. Uh, an opener's hands get very, very sore. The hand they hold their knife in, the palm of their hand where the knife handle goes, becomes one big blister until the man's hand is hardened up. It'll become layers and layers of hard skin will eventually uh, lay there, and uh, after two or three seasons, if you don't come and start working, it won't blister at all. In one of Bluff's most modern factories, conveyor belts take the shell from the benches to a waiting truck, which has only the brief spells of smoko and lunch break in which to unload. The job of sorting, counting and washing the oysters in fresh water, throwing out the ones that are cut or below standard, is done by girls in the packing room. A certain number of oysters are individually blast frozen and marketed as free flow oysters to meet the demands of restaurants and fish and chip shops making oyster fritters. But most are canned and sold fresh within a day or so. Like the men on the boats, the oyster openers are paid according to their tally. And a good opener needs the determination to work at pace from start to finish of the day. 21 oysters a minute, more than 1,000 an hour. oyster industry started before the days of factories and air freight and the ban on export, there was a regular weekly service across the Tasman, and bluff oysters were better known in Melbourne than in the North Island. The blast frozen free flow oysters must be packed as quickly as possible before they begin to stick to the trays. True to the forecast, the weather has worsened out in Fovo Strait. The oyster men take rough weather philosophically. Ah, oh, well, we can only work in weather up to a certain thing. When it gets really rough, well, you can still catch oysters, but not the same quantity. And when it comes to a certain stage, well, we just pack it in and go home. Even when weather stops the boat setting out at all, there's always the previous day's catch to be got away to all parts of the country. The 23 boats of the Oyster fleet try to get back in time to be unloaded by five.
In Bluff's pubs, the men from the oyster boats and opening factories can relax and leave the final jobs of the day to others. Oysters provide one of the biggest revenues in air freight in the country during the six months of the season. For the oyster men, it's the end of a day that began before dawn. <laughs> 